Hi guys, welcome to Rock Lee's Volleyball. This is Minecraft, so there's no need to get your eyes checked. Just thought I'd do it in here as it may be easier than trying to show you on an open court or piece of paper. We'll still do this video on a piece of paper, which will be another video, and you can see which one you like better. We got the um, sand court over here, but we're doing it on hard floor courts. So this is the back court, this is the front court, and that's the net. So it's in Minecraft style. So we've gone through our setting and digging. So so we'll do just do rules. So you know what the rules are, if you're not sure why you're getting pulled up or what's going on or if you just want a better understanding. Um, we'll do serving. When serving you can be anywhere behind the back line and you can serve the ball. Um, we've gone and talked about it on serving so you should know how to do it or have practiced it. So stand behind the um, line and Normally, if you want to do shorter, you just aim up a bit higher, a lot shorter, and the less high you aim, the longer, further it will go in most cases. And if you step over the line before your second hand hits the ball, it's called a fault, or if you're on the line when you start, it's called a fault. So just be wary of that. All right, and this is, uh, what is it, in line... Uh, if the ball lands in the court or on the line, it's counted as in. So if the ball is coming really close and it kind of hits here, which is kind of on the line and out, it will be considered as in because it hit the line. doesn't matter how much it hits the line. If it hits the line before it touches the ground, it's considered as in. So be careful of that. Uh, another rule is if you step over this line, during the course of a game, um, it's considered as a fault and the other team will get a point. Also, if you touch the net, if you touch the net and you interfere with the other person's game, um, it will be called, uh, even if you're coming up to block, it will be called a, um, I remember in a second, a fault, I just said it. And blocking, hopefully we can do some blocking, we can show you. Uh, blocking, you can only come over the net and block down on an attack. You can't come over the net and block down on a uh, set. You, if, it, if, it, if you do do it and you hit the ball down on the set, you may be picked up on it. So be careful of that. And yeah, so... Watch out for the nets, and I think that's the rules. Oh, yeah, use two hands to dig. If it hits one hand and another hand, it's counted as two hits. Um, also, because you're not allowed to touch it when you go up for a spike, if you hit the net, it will be classified as a fault on your part because you hit the net. Um, Ooh, what else is there? Okay, well, we'll just do positions quickly. We play... Um, the six-back formation. So... Um, the people, the numbers go... If we... Get a piece of wood and and this pole. Or block. Let's just do a block. A block of diamonds. <coughs> so the server is. Server is one. I'll put 
person that stands here. Is two. It's very simple after this. This the person in the middle is three, and the person over here is. I should tell you this is. Oh no. Oh. It's a six team sport, you can play with less. And this person is it? This person? Is that, yeah, that person? Uh, is, oh, I did it again. Why do I keep doing that? Five. And this person is uh, uh, six. So that's how the numbers go. And after one serves, one will come down here. And so basically when you're serving, that's what will happen. And where's my snowballs? And my snowballs? My snow. Oh, where do I put them? Hmm. Hmm. Seems to love snowballs. Hmm. Oh my dear. So snowballs basically server sets, how many balls you want, server serves, not server sets, server serves, ah, uh, not thinking, and then he or she will run up and go, and went to, to yeah. So yes, then one would go there. And this is the six bat formation. So that's how it's played. Um, six might need to go a bit further back actually. So maybe six go back up here. So number four covers this side of the net. Number two covers this side of the net. Number three is the center and number three ah oh, the other one I should have told you number three normally gets the ball second. Always always second unless calling for help. If you're in center number three and you can't get to the ball call for help and someone else will or everyone will just assume you're getting the ball and everyone will just stand around and not do anything. Number one here covers the backs of three and two and also this middle area here that number five also does it as well covers this middle area but covers the backs of four and three for if they're blocking or whatever, and you kind of rotate around. If someone's blocking on this side, this person can come over here, and five can move over, and two can move up close for any balls that they miss. So everyone can switch around, and six basically covers all of this back, and that's why they call it the six back formation, because most of the time, eight out of ten times, that all the action will go around in this area here. This is where all the action will be. And while annoying people will hit the ball for these sides of the court, 
most of the time in practice when you're playing, they'll actually miss. They very they either hit too hard, or one of the other teams will be able to get to the ball before it actually hits the back. So. If the ball's coming this side, number six would normally fall back here because that's where they hit, because there'll be more people here. So, but it's all about reading your opponent. And now I'll go under the net, which you're not supposed to do. Now this one is when they receive the ball. So, when you're receiving the ball. Three is actually facing back towards everyone. Two is on the line here. And I can't really do it. No. Yeah. Back. Depends if you're playing. If you're playing with average type people to not too good, this is probably the best spot for six. Well, five. So one five. Sorry, I get the numbers mixed up. Ah, I did it again. Last number left. I think it will. Which will be four. So that's that. And everyone basically digs to center. You dig or set to center. And then the center or three will then set the ball that way or that way. Or if they want to be really smart ass, that way. And then, but normally, then two will run up and hit the ball over, or four will run up and hit the ball over. Watch out for three might tip it. So if you stand here, here, you can block the ball when three tries to tip it over rather than setting. That's a very easy block. And because these two are running up for run up, this one's going back and these two are going to come forward. If you block number three, uh, three's tip, especially on the serve, it's very hard for the team, this team, to get the ball and get it back to you. So that's a kind of way to block a tip. Um, so, but if you're playing with a, a good team that knows each other in that, it's more, well, one comes a bit closer here. Five comes a bit closer. So if you're more trusting of each other, and yeah, that's what it's more like. And especially if you've got stronger players that can run back. And it's kind of like an arc circle. So yeah, it's more of an arc type circle and easy to get the ball to three and then six will fall back here and five and one will come into the middle. But if the ball goes past, six comes forward on the serve, so it covers this area. But if the ball goes back, five and two will cover all this area the serve. So that's a bit about positions and bits that should
help you play. So this one, oi, this one, and this one always gets the second ball it, it, unless they call help. That's the only difference. But they're expected to always get the second ball. So everyone will be look if you're centre, everyone will be looking at you when the second ball comes. So think about that when you're being centre and do some nice sets here nice nice and high if you're not very good at sets at least do it high because if you do it high like these snowballs they, it's easier for people to see look I can get to that now and oh now I can jump so if they're, if they're nice and high people can easily do it the professionals they do it low to the net to prevent the other people from hitting it and also keeping the ball down so that doesn't give people much options to read the ball see where the ball is going to be and smash it over so remember your setting from the first video and if you're not center but you're one of these and you remember you're digging most of the time when you're receiving a ball you would dig the ball to center so that's that, oh, and don't go underneath the line like this. Yeah, that would be a foul. All right. And yeah, there's different positions and maneuvers you can do. There's, I've got a information about it. If you want, just ask me and I can send it to you or I might post it up here. It's got all where to stand when the ball does what. And yeah, and all that good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this and gives you a bit more of an idea of what's going on and that people are actually moving and they're following this pattern. This is the basic pattern, this one. So people are actually following this. See, it looks like nice. So, and then you like, you understand. See, if six comes forward and these two are playing six back and six because the original one was six was in the middle and these two play back but six comes forward then this whole back court here is left underfeathered because these two believes six covering he's just coming up a bit so no one will watch the back and then the ball will go on the back and six will look to these two and these two will look at six like what the same is yeah so this is the six back formation but try and find out what formation your club uses to make it easier for you and so people aren't just standing there looking at the other people going what are you doing or trying to scream at each other saying what are you doing that doesn't make the game very fun so I hope this all helps you oh watch the lines if the other thing is I should say uh, difference from back court and front court back court these three players like if you set the ball, they can spike the ball from here. Oh, that. Yeah, they can spike the ball from here, jump up and spike it. But if they come into here, they're not allowed to jump. They can still hit the ball over or attack. And they can still come in here and dig the ball like these two, but they're not allowed to jump up and spike. If they jump up and spike, that's called a foul because they're not allowed to leave the ground in here but they are allowed to leave the ground back here. So, and these guys are allowed to leave the ground anywhere they want. So just watch out for that. If you come in here and then you come past here, then you've jumped, hit the ball, you may be caught up. If you jump before the line and then hit the ball, then land, you're all fine. But if someone sees you come past that line, then jump, they will call you on it. And yeah, you won't be too happy so just remember that lines if the ball's going to go in go for it uh, and you can also run considerably out here as long there's some when you're playing professional there's some poles that go on here and if the ball passes over this side it's out the ball has to pass over here so if the ball goes all the way out here and you run all the way out here on the second ball and hit the ball back and it goes over the net it's fine you just can't hit it that side or if you hit it back to your team and now you hit it over because it's the second ball it's fine unless the ball's here and then you can't it doesn't matter where you hit it it's already on past the other bounds 
So just because the ball's going out doesn't mean it's actually out of play. So it's good to run for those balls and get them back to these hitters. That's also, I should mention the other thing, what people assume is two and three always get, uh, two and four, sorry, always get the third hit. So when you're setting up. So if, say, we'll, oh, we'll do it on the side, the ball comes over and six goes to dig it, but can't really dig it in time and not very good dig and one gets the ball, it's, most people expect four and one for one to then set the ball near the net for two and four to hit the ball over. Or say if six sets, uh, digs the ball and then four gets it, four will normally set the ball to two. So look out for that. That you, was, you can see that happening a lot and that's if you're the second one that gets the ball, if you call help, try and get it towards the side guys because they're the ones that are expecting to hit it over. Try not to get it to centre because centre is not really expecting to get it over. Probably looking to see what the other team is doing to block. So, so yes. So try and get it to the outside hitters. So that's, um, I think that's it. Not enough lecturing or trying to help you or trying to whatever. You can throw stuff, so, but yeah, you can also serve anywhere on this line. You can serve over here if you want. This means you have to run, 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 run around here. Oh, run, 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 run through here. So, uh, and another tip, I guess you call it, if this guy is serving, so take him to say he's serving up there, I won't give, no, no, I won't give him a number, I just say, and this is six. Um, and you're not playing with a very strong team, like if number, oh, uh, where's number room? Like if you're playing with a very good team and this guy can block and number one is going to run all the way down to this position before that, before they even almost get the ball. So if this guy hits the ball and then it's down here and then these guys that are up for the set, then this position is fine, and this guy can block. But if you know, because not very good or not very experienced or not sure what to do, a good thing to do is have six move down to here, just temporarily, to kind of cover this back, but while still covering the back. It's kind of just helping each other out, trying to back each other up and help each other and then two moves back to the line. This this makes a little gap here, but two can easily run forward and block it. And then hopefully one has his back or six can back up two if need be. But it it eliminates this big dead spot here. It closes the gap up. See, there's there's still like a gap here and a gap here, but one's back here and one can easily fill that gap. And this gap here, two can easily fill it up. So it kind of closes the whole court off. Where the other way is when it's back that way. And then there, you've got this whole gap here that six has to try to cover. Two, it's really hard to run backwards. Really easy to run forwards, quite hard to run backwards or predictable running backwards. So two will have trouble getting back to the ball and one has to get all the way from that side of the court down here unless you're playing with a strong team that knows and supports each other. Um, it won't happen. I've actually seen um, when the ball, once the ball's been played, one will actually take six position for a turn and then one and six will swap around and six will go back and one will come back here. But just to cover the back there, I've seen that happen a couple of times. Because, yeah, and you have to be in position, but once the ball is served, you can swap positions during the gameplay. So, um, 
four can swap with three, as long as they're in the positions or close enough to their positions. They can't cross over, but they can be right. One can be here, and the other one can be there. So they can be really close. And then when the when it goes, they when the ball serves, they swap over. And if they don't do that, it'll be called out of rotation, and it'll be called a foul. Killer pick. So, yeah, so you can do that. There's lots of hints and tips you can do through it to work out. And uh, if I look, can you see my notes on swapping? More notes, lots of notes. Ah, oh, yes. So. Okay, so center has to be closest to the net when swapping. So you can, oh, you can stand, you have to stand like this really, like that. So three is here. And four. Is there so you can do that so if three isn't a very good setter or wants to um is a better hitter and four is a better setter then they can swap around after the ball is served and so uh, it doesn't matter if you're the person serving or you're the person receiving the serve except for if that happens here two or four is going to come down Normally they'll stay in that position until after they get the ball to, to three, then they swap. But they can also come down and set. And you'll have maybe one setter in the team. And as it goes around, they'll all change with the setter. So yeah, there'll be one, one setter and the rest will be all hitters. So look out for that if you see people running all over the court. And it's also... They know what they're doing, but it can also confuse you. And kicking the ball and do, doing stuff like that confuses the other team and can actually help you win because they have no idea what's going on or they find it funny and that little bit of laughter helps them or helps you get the ball across and them missing the ball or unable to get it back to you, which is good for you. So I hope that helps. Run over this video a couple of times. This one went for a bit longer. Um, I will do the other one if you didn't like using Minecraft tools, if you preferred um, pen and paper. So I will run over that one in pen and paper. Hopefully it won't be as long as this one. So yeah, hope to see you all out there. Have fun and I hope this helps. Okay everyone, have a nice day and bye bye.